Armando Hasudungan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasudungan, please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, post some interesting things if you're doing your artworks. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. In this video, we're going to talk about viruses, an overview. This should be a two-part series. Now, viruses are the smallest type of infectious particle. This means that compared to a bacteria, for example, viruses are much smaller. A typical size of a virus is about 100 nanometers in diameter, but it can range between 10 nanometers to about 300. Um, an erythrocyte, our red blood cells, are about 8 micrometers in diameter, which is about 100 times the size of a virus. So this gives you an idea of how small a virus can be. The structure of a virus differs between different types of viruses. But as a general rule, here we're just looking at a, um, a typical di uh, structure of a virus, you can say. As a general rule, they contain a capsid, which are made up of capsomere proteins. The capsid is important because inside this capsid, um, we can find the genetic material of the virus. So viruses possess either genetic material made up of single-stranded RNAs, double-stranded RNAs, uh, single-stranded DNAs, or double-stranded DNAs. They can also have partial strands, such as in the hepatitis B virus, which is partial double-stranded DNA. The capsid, which contains the genetic material of the virus, can be either a isocohedral shape or a helical shape. Some viruses also have envelope, usually consisting of a lipid bilayer that carry the capsid and the genetic material. But again, some viruses don't have it and they only have the capsid itself. Viruses also can have virulence factors such as certain receptors that target, uh, that allows the virus to target certain types of cells. Now, why would an envelope be useful for a virus? Well, as mentioned, the virus, um, the envelope is typically made up of a lipid bilayer. A human cell is also made up of a lipid bilayer. So if a virus would come along, they can fuse their envelope with the host cell, releasing the capsid or genetic material inside the cell, like shown here. So we can say that the envelope helps viruses attach to host cells. Now, there are many types of viruses. Some examples include a bacteriophage that invades bacteria, herpes virus, and uh, picanovirus. And there are much, much more, of, of course. Now, viruses are classified into groups or families based on the type of nucleic acid they can, uh, nucleic um, genetic material they contain, their structure, their shape, and their method of replication. So based on all these classifications, there are a lot of different groups of viruses as well as subgroups. Anyways, viruses also in infect specific living cells based on the presence of suitable receptors. An example of this is a um, the example of this is HIV virus, which only infects uh, the T helper cells. Because the HIV virulence factors, it complements, basically, it can attach to the T helper cell's uh, so-called CD4 receptor. Now let's take a look at a popular type of virus now called the bacteriophage and see its mode of replication. Remember, a bacteriophage infects bacteria and not humans. Um, later, we will see the general overview of how virus uh, replication occurs inside a human cell. But for now, we'll just see um, uh, how the bacteriophage uh, in infects a bacteria. We have to understand that all viruses, not only the bacteriophage, but all viruses always replicate inside another living cell. In this case, a bacteriophage will infect a living bacteria, a living cell, and will replicate inside 
the bacteria. And this will result in different pathways. Now let's have a closer look. The bacteria contains its own unique DNA here. Let's call it the bacterial chromosome. When the bacteriophage, the virus, attaches onto the bacteria, it will release its genetic material. In this case, it's releasing phage D, the, the DNA from the ca capsid. The DNA is known as the phage DNA. From this point, the in viral infection can enter what's called the lytic cycle or the lysogenic cycle. As a general rule, you can remember the lytic, that lytic sounds like lysis, and lysis means to burst, so this lytic cycle will result in the bacteria to burst, to die, basically. Let's first follow the lytic cycle. In the lytic cycle, the virus, the bacteriophage, uh, the phage DNA, will take over the bacteria's cell machinery and begin synthesizing new bacteriophage DNA and proteins to create new bacteriophages, new viruses within the bacteria. The synthesis and accumulation of these new bacteriophages, these new viruses, will cause the bacteria to lice, to, to burst basically, which will release these bacteriophages out. The bacteriophages can then infect other surrounding bacteria, and the cycle can continue on. The lytic, the lytic cycle is actually the most common uh, outcome of the phage infection, but sometimes the lysogenic cycle can occur. Following the ins let's have a look. Now, following the insertion of the phage DNA inside the bacteria, the phage DNA can actually incorporate itself into the bacterial DNA, the bacterial chromosome, creating what's called a prophage or provirus. Now, what would this mean? In this case, the bacteriophage, the virus, is latent. The viral infection is latent and does not cause uh, the production or the synthesis of new uh, phage DNA and proteins or does not cause the bacteria to lice. So basically, um, this viral infection is latent, meaning that it will cause no damage. However, when the bacteria itself divides, like because that's what bacteria do, they divide, the phage DNA is also copied and this can keep occurring. So again, each time the bacteria divides, the phage DNA will also be copied and so we would have more phage DNA. Now, this can keep occurring, the bacteria can keep dividing and uh, phage DNA can, all, can keep being copied until one day the phage DNA decides to move out of the bacterial chromosome. So the prophage, the phage DNA, may excise from the bacterial chromosome and then it can enter the lytic cycle. And so when it, because it's, it's, it's out, the, the phage DNA is out of the bacterial chromosome, it can then enter the lytic cycle and cause the bacteria to burst. I hope that makes sense. Of course, there is another uh, pathway, another, not a cycle, but another pathway. The lysogenic cycle can give rise to a specialized transduction in which the bacterial genes, the bacterial chromosomes or part of the bacterial chromosomes are transferred with the phage DNA to another bacteria through conjugation, for example. And thus, this will result in that new bacteria becoming infected as well. I hope that makes sense. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, next, we'll look at how a virus can replicate inside a human cell. Thank you.